Welcome to Power Code Music. In this presentation, we're going to talk about audio and MIDI patch bays and why I use them. Now look, I understand that talking about patch bays is not as cool or sexy as talking about things like effects processors or digital multi-track recorders, but patch bays are one of those topics that separate the big studios from the small studios. So if your studio is growing rapidly and you are trying to hang on to a way to keep your manageability of this growth, <laughs> then you landed in the right place. So with this, grab your coffee, your tea, sit back and relax and stay with me because you're not going to want to miss a minute of this presentation. The very first audio patch bays originated in telephone switching stations as early as 1877. This is where operators would manually connect analog telephone lines via patch cables on a large panel of jacks. Now for instance, the many TRS connectors used on many patch cables today are still called tiny telephone connectors. Now put simply, audio patch bays are switchboards used for rerouting audio signals and MIDI patch bays are switchboards used for rerouting MIDI signals and messages. Now in general, okay, patch bays allow you to change the signal flow of devices in your studio without the need to get behind your gear to unplug and replug the cables to your actual hardware devices. I hate that. Every time I have to get behind this thing behind me here, it's a nightmare. I can't stand doing it. So with this, patch bays also save wear and tear on the jacks of your actual hardware equipment. Keep that in mind. Now using audio and MIDI patch bays also allows me the flexibility to change the audio signal chain of devices in my studio according to the specific processes or workflows that I'm using. For example, my studio has three main workflows that are directly related to its current configuration state, okay? Now this includes, but it's not limited to, it includes re the recording, mix down and monitoring processes, and mastering. Now without the use of patch bays, changing workflows in my studio will cause me to get behind my equipment to unplug and replug cables, which in my studio would be chaotic, frustrating, and time consuming, and it would be hard to keep track of any given workflow. You know, especially if you're changing from one to another, you might ask yourself, well, what workflow was I in? What workflow am I in? It just gets confusing. Now, let's start by analyzing the audio patch bay. The front panel of the audio patch bay contains rows of inputs and output jacks. On a rack mountable patch bay, there's usually two rows of jacks on the rear panel and two rows of jacks on the front panel. Audio patch bays do not require power, generally. <laughs> now hardware such as effects processors, preamps, sound modules, digital multi-tracks recorders, uh, and more can be plugged into an audio patch bay. The patch bay I use in my studio is the DBX PB48 rack mountable patch bay. Now this patch bay's jacks accept balanced TRS and unbalanced TS standard audio quarter inch plugs. Let's drill down a bit to better understand audio patch bays. In order to appreciate how audio patch bays work, including mine, we first need to review some common terms and definitions that govern them. The first term is called normaled. Now in this setup, audio signals automatically flow between a vertical pair of patch bay jacks without the need for patch cords. The second term is called half normaled. Now this means that each rear panel upper jack is normal or connected to the jack directly below it as long as nothing is plugged in to the lower front panel jack. Now 
check out the image on your screen and recognize that plugging into the upper front panel jack does not break the connection between the upper and the rear panel jacks, while plugging into the lower front panel jack breaks the connection. The next term is denormaled or non-normaled. This means that each front panel jack is routed directly to the related rear panel jack. For example, the first upper front jack is connected to the first upper rear jack. The same is true of the jacks below it. Now, denormal setups are useful with effects devices or other input output devices because of its direct signal flow that basically helps to reduce feedback and the chance of oscillations through signal loops. Now, it's common to set up your audio patch bay with some boards normaled, or should I say some parts normaled and some parts denormal, so that your front panel patch points are as flexible as possible, um, you know, as your requirements dictate. And you also want to be sure that you maximize your patch bay real estate as much as possible. Well, last but not least in this area, always make sure that you keep a template of your front panel jacks so that you know how your patch bay is connected to your system. Let's move on and analyze the MIDI patch bay. Put simply, a MIDI patch bay is a device that has several MIDI inputs and outputs. The unit also allows any input to be routed to any output. Now, many MIDI patch bays also feature uh, like signal mergers, splitters, and filter functionality to further manage your signal flow. Since its inception, there have been many different types of MIDI patch bays. Now, these include standalone MIDI patch bays where no PC is required. All settings and presets are stored in the hardware unit. This is what I prefer. I, I've always loved this type of MIDI patch bay. However, today, larger standalone MIDI patch bays uh, with 16 ins and 16 outs, if you can find them, are you know difficult to get a hold of. <laughs> Uh, and some scaled down units don't even require power at all. The next type of MIDI patch bay is the PC based patch bay. Now, of course, in this scenario, a PC is required. The unit is driven by software on a computer via a USB connection. The power supply may be derived from that USB connection or from a separate power adapter. The third is a hybrid MIDI patch bay. A PC and software are required to program the MIDI presets of the patch bay via a USB connection. Afterwards, the unit can operate as a standalone device that allows you to change the pre-programmed presets independently from its front panel controls. These units generally require power. Now, in my studio, I use three Motu MIDI Express XT 8x8 USB MIDI interfaces and one Motu MicroLite 5x5 USB MIDI interface. The Motu Express XT falls under the hybrid definition. Now when it comes to MIDI signal routing and flexibility, there's virtually nothing the Motu Express XT can't do, but its rich feature set can be quite intimidating to some. Now, setting up the Motu MIDI patch bay, though, is pretty straightforward. You would connect each MIDI device's, um, well, each of your MIDI device's MIDI in jack to the MIDI out jack. You would connect the MIDI out jack on the MIDI device to one of the MIDI in jacks on the Motu MIDI interface. Okay, finally, you would connect the Motu to a PC via a USB. Now, at this point, I use the Motu software to route and manage the MIDI signals to and from different MIDI devices. Now, this allows me to change my entire home studio's MIDI configuration in seconds using presets. <laughs> ah. Now, MIDI devices that do not receive MIDI data, such as dedicated keyboard controllers, uh, guitar controllers, or drum pads, only need the MIDI connection B that's shown on your screen right now. Devices that never send any MIDI data at all, such as um, the sound modules, they only need connection A that's shown on your screen. 
So study that just for a second. All right. Now, if you plan to use things like an editor librarian software package with a sound module, or if you need to get like system exclusive data bulk dumps uh, from it, um, then you would want to make both connections shown on your screen. In general, again, make both connections for any device that needs to both send and receive MIDI data. Now check this out. You can also connect additional gear to a MIDI patch bay using MIDI throughs. For instance, if you use up all of the MIDI outs on your MIDI patch bay and you still have a lot more gear to connect, then try running a MIDI cable from the MIDI through of a device that's already connected to your patch bay to the MIDI in on an additional device. Now this is shown on your screen, so check this out. The two devices will then share the same MIDI out port on the MIDI patch bay. This means that they will share the same set of 16 MIDI channels as well. So try to do this with devices that receive on only one MIDI channel, such as effects modules, so that their receive channels don't conflict with one another. Now again, always make sure that you keep a template of the connections on the front panel of your MIDI patch bay so that you know and understand how it's connected to your system. In summary, patch bays are standard equipment in mid-sized to larger recording studios for many of the same reasons discussed in this presentation. If you're not using a patch bay and the devices in your home studio are growing rapidly, then I strongly suggest that you consider the addition. Look, the bottom line here is that the more equipment you have in your home studio, the more important it is to have the flexibility you need to change their connections quickly and easily and control them in relation to your workflows. Now, patch bays make this possible. Well, that's a wrap. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen now and join our group. We have new videos coming out every seven to 14 days and we would love to have you be a part of our team. Now, also leave a comment in the comment section below. Let us know what you thought about this video and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify. While you're here, listen to some of the music, watch some of the other videos. Let us know what you think about that too. Also check out the playlist. They're all set up just for you. Thanks so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you soon.